Joining us now is Ojinika Ojiope, who stories trending around the world. Hello, Jinix. Dr. Abati, how are you this morning? It's so strange to have you sitting here, but look at Dr. Abati with all his angels. Well, I mean, look at that. Well, actually, I used to sit here. I remember In those that. Days I remember when that. I used to be surrounded I remember that. by women. By women. I mean, I'm blessed among you are. women. You are. I'm so blessed <laughs> among women. Different. I imagine many men out there are yes. me. They are right now. I know that for a fact. I mean, I hope that someone will take a screenshot of this. So this is gorgeous. <laughs> Good morning, Adefemi. <laughs> Good to see you. It's good to see you. Lovely. Yeah, yeah, do. You too, of course. Yeah. You're always doing well. Hey, high spirits. We love it. Always. Good morning. I have to <laughs> channel my inner spirits every time I come for what's trending for our viewers. <laughs> Even though we have challenging times in Nigeria, yeah. please, we can smile as well. Well, good morning to you, viewers. Well, as reactions continue to trail the planned nationwide youth protests slated for August 1st over rising cost of living and economic hardship, a former spokesperson for the Atiku Abubakar campaign in the 2023 elections, Daniel Boala, said that some foreign interests are taking advantage of the political climate in the country to promote the nationwide protest. Boala spoke in Abuja on Wednesday when he visited President Bola Ahmed Tinubu at the Aso Rock Villa. Let's take a look. I honestly believe that, um, uh, that there is, an, to a large extent, the element of politics my belief that it even transcends the country, there, must, there, will be, there would have been foreign interests, but taking advantage of the poor political climate. Because the fact of hunger and suffering, we know that everybody in Nigeria acknowledges that there is suffering. And the suffering did not start last year. We've been dealing with that issue you know, of suffering, you know, lack of employment. We are talking about entrepreneurship. Virtually every aspect of economy and security is what we have always been pushing the envelope and see how we can attain a better place. But suddenly, the conversation, if you see the mainstream and the social media, is all about they want to bring the government down, President Bola Tinibu must resign. Once you hear that kind of talk and language, then you don't need somebody to interpret that there is a political connotation. You must be aware that people have been holding meetings saying they want to unseat the president. By our constitution, he has four years, and it's renewable for another time of four years. All right, I love that he uh, quoted the constitution there. He's very aware that, you know, protest is our constitutional right as well. But there he goes with the Emilokong cap. I mean, he's, he's fully an APC member, absolutely. But you know the conversation has been going on here in Lagos as well. There are, you know, conversations around trying to stop the nationwide protest, I mean, in Lagos, because it's going to go around 36 states. And we see this tweet from Lagospedia. They wrote uh, a public announcement. Attention, residents and visitors of Lagos, please be informed that the Oro Festival will be observed in various communities across Lagos from the 1st of August to August 15th. This traditional Yoruba cultural event involves significant rituals, Retweet for awareness. Of course, you know this has garnered so many reactions. I believe the Lagos state government has also responded, saying that as the youth wants to come out to protest, I mean, these uh, our ritualists also are allowed to protest. But let me take some reactions. This is from Inkiru, who wrote, uh, to prevent voters from voting, they declared Oro Festival in Lagos on the 25th of February, 2023, to prevent protests against bad governance. They declared Oro Festival from 1st August to 14th August. Oro government. <laughs> but the show must go on. Another Twitter user, there goes uh, Oro Festival in Lagos, now allegedly scheduled for the first two weeks of August, the exact same period of the planned protests by the youth. Chai! So after turning billionaires to podcasters, this government, don't they turn our ancestors to political jobbers? God, I beg you, Dr. Abati, God, I beg you. But obviously, this is the conversation we've been having. Okay, two quick things. You, I would like for you to actually address the Oro Festival because I want to know what it means in terms of those days that are set up for, for the festival. Okay, the yes. Oro Festival exactly. in Yoruba land, mm -hmm. in many communities where they have the Oro cult, mm -hmm. is used to cleanse the community, right. to drive away evil spirits. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the Oro uh, mask can be brought out uh, on special occasions, yes. like when the uh, traditional ruler of the community mm -hmm. uh, dies. However, the Oro, you know, does not usually come out 
in daytime. In the daytime. It's okay. usually at night. Okay. And the oru does not target women. Uh, does not target men. Mm -hmm. It targets only women. women because women are asked not to come out at particular uh, types of the day. Well, I can't say more than that. I can't go into any detail beyond that. But what is suspicious mm -hmm. about this is the political dimension to <laughs> yeah, it. Absolutely. The uh, politics of it is that they are doing this now to coincide with uh, the planned uh, 10 days of rage uh, that uh, the protesters are talking about. The last time this was done, this ritual approach was taken to uh, po Nigerian politics, was during the 2023 general election, mm -hmm. when in certain communities in Lagos, you know, the uh, traditionalists said people should not come out because they will bring out the Oro Festival. And in fact, they, they placed uh, uh, sacrificial offerings at strategic locations yeah. in uh, yeah, Lagos I State. That, yeah. So the argument that, uh, you know, traditional worshippers also have their right, yes, but nobody yeah. has absolute rights under the Constitution. Uh, uh, in the Constitution, Section 45, I think, you know, talks about freedom of uh, religion, freedom of, uh, of worship. But you cannot say you are doing your freedom of worship and you will shut down Lagos State. Mm -hmm. You cannot shut down Lagos State. Okay. That would be abusing Absolutely. the rights of other people. Mm -hmm. Uh, but this is to scare people. This is a traditional <laughs> contribution to the do not protest yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, thing that we have been seeing. Right. As for well, Daniel Bwala. Yes. Daniel Bwala has been on this uh, table, uh, you know, on many occasions. First, he was uh, in the Atiku camp in People's Democratic Party. Yeah. And at that time, he was campaigning vigorously against the APC and against uh, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinubu. Yeah. But now that uh, Ashwa Jubala Tinubu uh, is uh, president, he has seen the light like Saul yeah. on his way to Damascus. <laughs> and he says now, you know, that he has seen the light. Yeah. He is now committed to promoting mm -hmm. President Tinubu. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, you know, very soon, mm -hmm. his spirit, like Felicia Shaibu's spirit, you know, has also left where it was. His, his own spirit yeah. is now in the uh, a APC, yeah. like uh, Philip Shaibu's yeah. uh, spirit also. So we see all this, uh, you know, uh, political, oh, yeah. where I don't want to use an unfair, <laughs> you know, phrase. Right. You know, we see them jumping from one place to the other. What is amazing is the energy, the enthusiasm with which Nigerian politicians defend one position today, and then two, three months down the line, they have changed. They are singing uh, another thing yeah. with them. In fact, I won't be surprised if by the end of this year, yeah. something changes yeah. and you find some of them <laughs> also changing. Right. But I would like to end with uh, Dan Webola's uh, favorite phrase in Yoruba. He used to say on this scene, Kokoroto inje fo, inu e fo lo wa. So now uh, it looks like that Ebola has gone to eat uh, a four in the APC. But there is no Kokoro inside that Ebola. I don't well, know. you will tell well, us. Well, you know, I mean, still on the protest. I mean, I know I loved your um, input, Dr. Abati, when you talked about, you know, um, avoiding anarchy. And, you know, we've seen this protest and the flyers that have been going around. And most of these protests, or the flyers that we have seen, they say it's to end bad governance. I mean, we've seen these protest flyers going around. They've done them in different languages. And when you hear um, the presidency come out to, you know, attack certain group of people, or even Daniel Buala saying that it is political, then you begin to wonder. But I think that some of those inputs are very important because the youth, they need to listen and know at this time is a crucial time for this government that have come up with their reforms. Anyways, uh, it, when we talk about engaging the youth, I'd like for you to discuss this. Well, while looking at measures to engage the youth, the wife of the president, Senator Oluremi Tinubu, yesterday urged young people of Nigeria to embrace farming. Tinbu made the call while speaking with the management of the National Agricultural Development Fund. She emphasized the need for programs that engage the youth in farming despite urbanization challenges. Well, let's take a look. The young people are the future of any uh, idea we are putting on the table right now because there has, there, 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 there has been a you know, huge disconnect between what reality is and what fiction is or what social media is. Because in social media, they can build a castle in one minute, but that's not the reality. But 
if we begin to catch them young. I remember in my day, we have gardening schools. So, and that has always been there. But nowadays that most people who go to public schools are children from, you know, less privileged backgrounds. They don't live in an environment where there will be a garden or to say they want to grow something. But now they are smart gardening. You can build, you can do a garden in a bucket. All right, uh, Ayo, go ahead. Smart gardening is actually using technology to, um, for the process of farming. So it's actually quite capital intensive. Robot AI is involved. So it's beyond just bucket farming. Um, in terms of the whole of, I mean, the, the entirety of her messaging in terms of people taking on farming, young people, absolutely. When I was younger um, in school, in primary school, it was part of the curriculum. Agricultural science was that we would actually go and plant. In fact, I remember for Junior Waeka at the time, 50% um, was theory, 50% mm -hmm. was you actually having to plant something and understanding the soil and hopefully to generate an interest and like she mentioned, catching them young so that people can farm. However, the truth is, I was saying to Dr. Bate earlier today on air that we don't have time to farm because mm -hmm. we are going about pursuing our daily bread. I said, was it when you spend four hours in traffic, you go and look after your farm, you know, at the end of the day. So that there are practicalities that is not very immediate in terms of the solution for Nigerians. But in terms of how promoting agriculture and farming, absolutely, I think yes. it should be promoted, especially with young people catching them young. But in the same vein, it must be seen as an active part of our curriculum mm -hmm. and we should include it so that young people are made aware. Yes. But I'd like to say something about the first story, especially with regards to the Oro Festival. And I'm glad that we broke it down in terms of how it disproportionately affects women, that women are the ones who cannot move at a particular time. When this conversation comes up, I believe there's a white elephant that I'm surprised a lot of women groups have not come out to speak mm -hmm. about this, especially the fact that when the Constitution talks about freedom of movement, is it referring to just men in the Constitution yeah. or are women included as well? Yeah. I understand that it's a traditional practice that's gone on for many years. Mm -hmm. But we must also, as men and women, protect the interests of our girls, women, especially in the Southwest. Yeah. I know it's been happening, but we need to sometimes revise some of these things and see if it goes against the provisions of the Constitution. Yeah. As a woman, why should I be bad for moving at night because of a... I, 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 that's, I don't understand that, and I'm surprised oh, that yeah. a number of people... I, 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 think, know, that, I think Dr. Vatican can, come can come address that. If, you, if you yeah. want to come yeah. up. <laughs> you know, there's so, one song. So, 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 no, one song. Let me give you one Let me give you one Oro song. Just like, well, I don't Please want to do. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, boom, 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 Wait. Well, <laughs> if you can come, you can come out. You can come out. Yeah. Uh, wait, what, as, a woman. as a woman. This is about culture. This yeah, is that's, about that's ritual. What, that's, the, that, that's where that uh, plays in, uh, the difference between culture and, you know, um, rule of law. But that's, I mean, it depends, like Dr. Bati said. You can come out if you are not uh, part of the group of oral no, worshippers. Is that right? Out. Well, you come out. <laughs> <laughs> but can you can you come out, <laughs> no, no, no. Dr. Bati? <laughs> no, no. I mean, yeah, the, but then then the, the cultural, then that is a, the a, a complete valid point. It's yeah. culture. It's, it's culture, ritual. religion. You know, but mm -hmm. it's just that they are not using it for political purposes. No, yeah, to it should be. Yeah, people, to restrict people's right, movement right. unnecessarily, mm -hmm. even when it is not. Uh, required by yeah. tradition. Right. That's the abuse, yeah. you know, uh, that we can condemn. Yes. But I, I won't advise you as a woman <laughs> yeah. to come out okay. when you hear... But you're advising... Like, <laughs> <laughs> don't, but, but please, they, don't, but <laughs> don't dare that. In summary, um, Adefemi, I think really about the protests. Uh, we have seen the presidency come out to attack uh, Peter Obi's supporters. We have seen now Dana Buola saying that it is foreign interest and that it is political. I think, like we have said, the government need to also pay attention attention to the cries of the young people of yes. Nigeria who are really advocating to end bad governance. We are talking about all these senators that are making so much money. Start from all that conversation. But in another development, Adifemi, hmm. Senate President Godswill Akbabu appears to have misinformed the public when he claimed that Nigerians can no longer pay any domestic worker below 70 thousand naira as minimum wage. Black Babio was speaking at plenary after the new minimum wage bill was passed into law. Akbabio emphasized that the new wage applies to all and sundry, including employers that hire a maid, driver, or gatekeeper. Let's take a look. Every Nigerian employed in any kind of employment, be it private sector, government, 
or otherwise would not receive anything below 70,000 a month. And this is the beauty of minimum wage. It, does, it is not maximum wage. It only says that if you are a tailor and you employ additional hand, you cannot pay the person below 70,000. If you are a mother and you have a newborn child and you want to bring in a housemate to look after your child, you cannot pay that housemate below 70,000. All right, Femi, before I come to you. Okay. Section 4 of the National Minimum Wage Act 2019 stipulates that the minimum wage requirement does not apply to employers with fewer than 25 employees. Well, according to the law, an establishment with the following employees is exempted from the minimum wage. A, part-time basis. B, commission or piece rate. C, establishment employing less than 25 persons. D, workers in seasonal employment like agriculture and any person employed in a vessel or aircraft to which the laws regulating merchant shipping or civil aviation apply. Adefemi Akinsoya. We were just discussing um, we Akpabio yesterday, and I was, you know, praising him for uh, finally apologizing, for apologizing, to and, and gas promising, I'm promising to treat women better. And now another one. Okay, why doesn't he know that? Why doesn't he know that it doesn't apply in mm -hmm. this in the domestic situations that he mentioned? Right. Why doesn't he know? And I think that when we're talking about misinformation, intentional or not internet, intentionally, it, it can be quite dangerous because now you're going to have people in their households, them, your drivers and your maids saying, that, saying to their madams yeah. and their orgas that, well, I need to be paid this amount. And funnily enough, many people are probably being paid that amount or more in their house. It, it just depends on the situation. But I do think that you have to be careful, especially with your position when you're making these types of, um, when you're sharing this type of information, you have to interpret these things clearly. Yes. If there is clearly under Section 4, as you mentioned, the fact that the minimum wage applies to certain people just who employ a certain time, number of people, yes. it's just not something that you can, Absolutely. it's not the type of mistake you yeah, should I, be making. I, I understand that you... you, you I, I mentioned yes. this yesterday. I must have quoted that section four mm. of the Minimum Wage Act uh, like 10 times on this program. Mm -hmm. Now, what I said yesterday is that the law is a law. The minimum wage is a law. Yeah. So the question I asked is, is the National Assembly going to remove, or amend, or rework that section four. So because what they are going to come up with yes. is the new minimum wage at 2024. Mm -hmm. So when it comes, we'll look at it and see whether that section four in the 2019 act is retained. So that is it. We cannot uh, reach any conclusion until mm -hmm. we see what they have published to say mm -hmm. this is the law. Take okay. another story. Well, Nigeria's former first lady, Miriam Sonia Bacha, and her son, Mohammed, have filed a lawsuit against President Tinubu, the minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Yesom Wike, and three other government agencies before the Court of Appeal in Abuja, seeking recovery of an alleged unlawfully revoked property belonging to the former head of state, the late General Sonia Bacha. The property said to be located in the Maitama district of Abuja was revoked by the federal government and sold to a private company, allegedly without the knowledge of the Abacha family. Miriam and Mohammed are asking the court of appeal to void and set aside the judgment of Justice Peter Lifu of the Federal High Court in Abuja, which on May 19, 2024, dismissed their suit on the property, according to them, a party to a proceeding cannot transfer title to a third party during the pendency of an action. I mean, we are seeing this story. Obviously, Nigerians have reacted because we have been talking about Abacha lose, as Dr. Abati will say, our money. <laughs> Where is our money? Only last year, especially, uh, I believe the Federal High Court had, you know, asked the federal government to account for the $5 billion loot that was recently recovered. I'm not a hundred, I mean, the case is in court in terms of the Land Use Act and all of that, but Nigerians are saying, please, where is our loot? <laughs> also, to, 
in fairness to them, yeah. we don't know where how this um, land was gotten. Yes. We don't know if it passed due process at the right. time it was allocated. We don't know where the money came mm -hmm. from that bought the land, whether it was, I don't want to believe that all their wealth is from loose, even though we've seen that a significant amount of Nigerians common wealth is in the coffers of a particular family. And so I can understand a number of people coming out to say that you are in court again for another property. Yeah. But as you mentioned, and, and as you stated earlier, there's, the matter had been to court and was, um, um, was struck out because they said they didn't have they didn't have jurisdiction. Now they're appealing as well, stating that the, um, they, they didn't quite agree with the ruling of that particular um, court and they're going to the appeal court, even though the property in question has now been sold to a Salamed organization. So they've, the, the Salamed organization is joined as the fourth respondent to this particular um, action. So let's see how this will pan out. Mm -hmm. But just to mention that, unfortunately, and this is what happens with bad leadership, bad governance looting, everything you own will be put under scrutiny. Yeah. Everything you own will be seen as, is it really your money that you used to purchase this? Or is this one of Nigeria's commonwealth that has been you know, put into a particular land and now you're claiming the land? That is the challenge mm -hmm. here. But, but we don't know if indeed it is um, you know, stolen money that bought that land. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's called the law of real property or land law, at least it, as it is uh, popularly otherwise known. Now, every Nigerian, whether you are Abacha's son or Abacha's wife, you have the right to own property, movable and immovable property, under Section 43 of the 1999 Constitution. So whether Abacha stole Nigeria bland or not, you know, members of his family have the right to own land, Section 43, and by extension, Section 44 of the 1999 Constitution. However, if you acquire land or real property, have you taken possession? Possession is 99% of the law. Two, do you have the appropriate title to it? Mm -hmm. By having the appropriate title means that you will have gone through the necessary processes. We saw that in a Kwara State at a point when there was an attempt by the government of the day to take land uh, from the Saraki uh, family. So those are the issues. And it's within the rights of the uh, Abacha family to say, well, the FCT authorities have uh, reallocated our land or they have revoked our right of occupancy if they have it, right. you know, and then they go to court. So Justice Peter Lifu of the Federal High Court of the FCT has ruled against them. Now they've gone to the Court of Appeal. They can even go all the way to the Supreme Court mm -hmm. to, you know, assert their right. Yes. The law allows you to pursue your rights. Yeah. And within the hierarchy of courts, if one court does not favor you, you go to the next one, yeah. all the way to the Supreme Court. Yeah. So I don't, I, I think the Abacha family, yes, they can go to court. Yeah, they have a right to and go they to court, court with absolutely. A, with judge. Yeah, they have a right to go to court. Nigerians are still asking for their loot. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> let's head over to Tanzania now, where earlier in the week, the country's president, Samia Suluhu Hassan, was heavily criticized for having a convoy of, of approximately 100 and 20 vehicles. Let's take a look at this video that has now gone viral. Yo, Msafara, I see you. Mama Samia Sulu. Ondoa Sulu. Oh, Baba Maki. What's up? I, I had to show this video because it's not just our president yes. that, 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 that has done this. I mean, we see. It's, it's not that specific. <laughs> this is where state that we talk about. It's yeah, true. I, I, you have to be fair because good. she's the first female um, president of, of, of Tanzania. Now, yeah. we're seeing, you know, they say women yeah. will bring change, better managers. I still believe that. Yes. But it's not only men. That's Thank worse. God. I, not now, we know Aya is not we, biased. No, 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 yeah. I'm not. It's, Unfortunately. It's not it's just a, a but this question of leadership. It's, it's, it's everywhere. Almost worldwide. Even the United States, they are convoys. Yeah, of course. Huge. All right, we'll take our final story in the United States now, where thousands of protesters demonstrated outside the U.S. Capitol as Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu addressed U.S. lawmakers. The protesters called Netanyahu a war criminal and demanded a ceasefire while condemning the killings of more than 39,000 in the war.
that the family, there were a lot of arrests. Others also condemned Netanyahu's uh, inability to free Israeli American hostages taken by Hamas during that whole thing. But you watched Netanyahu's speech yesterday at the U.S. Capitol. He yes. got a standing ovation. His speech was quite commanding. But you see here, these people are out here protesting against the atrocious war that is going on in Palestine. Yes. And those protests permeated inside. Yeah. Yes, the vast majority of people applauded Benjamin Netanyahu, Netanyahu's uh, speech. As you said, he spoke very strongly. But there were lawmakers inside the building who had uh, their scarves on, their signs too. And I do think that while we can accept yeah. that what is happening in Israel, that the hostages should return home safely, yes. we can also acknowledge that Israel's behavior in this conflict have been heavy handed and they do constitute a war crime. Yeah, so absolutely. I do accept that people should rightfully criticize Benjamin Netanyahu. Absolutely. Uh, like we say, it's so always their right. The protesters yes. were arrested right. for going beyond the First Amendment. Mm -hmm. Inside the uh, Congress, uh, Representative Rashida Tlaib mm -hmm. was saying the man is a war criminal. Yes. Right. You know, but uh, Netanyahu, yeah. you know, did he get applause? Uh, yes. He did. I watched uh, the whole thing. On the surface thing. of he it, did, yes. 80 Democrats yeah. boycotted the uh, right. speech. Right. The VP boycotted the speech. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, mm -hmm. he was lying. He was defensive. Yes. I don't think he was very strong. Yeah. He was defensive and he was lying well, all right. about Gaza <laughs> and the humanitarian crisis. I watched crisis. the whole process. He got an applause every sentence he made, basically. Well, all right. They've called him a war criminal. I mean, everyone has a right to protest and they are protesting for free Palestine. I'd love to thank you all for your great, great analysis as always on What's Trending. Well, that's all I have for you guys on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.